Good morning! It's Christmas Eve 2018. It's so yucky out. It's cold and it's wet. It's raining. Oh my goodness. So Mr. Dolan, tell us what's going on here today. So today we have our set crew from Pennsylvania who's going to be putting together this uh, 24 by 38 foot two bedroom, two bath home that was built by Redmond Home. And today the set crew is basically laying out the block. They're gonna bring both halves together, put on the siding and the roof, and it'll be all done probably within about five or six hours. So what time did they get here? They were here around seven. Well, normally they're here at 5 a.m. How, how far do they drive to get here, a lot? It's about a three hour drive. Oh, okay. So it looks like you're gonna be doing the sidewalk also? Yeah, the sidewalk's going to be replaced. <clears throat> wow, patio. that's a lot of sidewalk. We're be putting a patio and a small deck on the front, and there's a patio on the back. So tell us the steps that are going on here. What's the first step that so happens? The first step is they need to slide both halves together. And once they slide both halves together, they then will be able to set the blocks and put it into the position that it needs to be in so that uh, they can start siding and roofing it. So they do that with hydraulic jack, right? They use jacks, a hydraulic jack. And they also use a mechanical chain come along to bring both heads together. And then let's talk about the foundation. What's um... so this foundation is uh, a series of footings. Uh, the footings are 30 inches deep, and no, I'm sorry, these footings are 36 inches deep by 24 inches in diameter. And then around the whole uh, set of footings is a full concrete slab, which is 12 inches on the outside perimeter and six inches throughout. And then eventually the house will be tied down to the concrete slab to secure it in place. And that makes the entire foundation system uh, super strong, super safe, and then very stable. We'll be able to um, tie the whole thing down so it becomes one entire unit that's connected to the concrete. So in previous videos I've talked about the concrete piers. That's not the footings. Right. The footings so it's are footings the is the circular right? The What's under there? there? These are the footings and they go beyond the frost line, right? They go down 36 inches. Okay. And then the it's sitting on a steel chassis and it's sitting on a concrete slab, but the footings are even deeper than the slab. Yeah, the footings are 36 inches deep. Okay. The so is 12 inches thick on so the outside edge and 6 inches throughout the whole center. And this material is for the piers which actually sit under the chassis in the under the steel frame. So there's actually in my mind four parts of the foundation. The footings, the slab, the piers, and then the straps. Yep. And this has uh, 24 footings. And these 24 footings is what supports the house. And then there are tie down straps which go on the I beam of the frame and comes down on a 45 degree angle and goes into the 12 inch thick concrete outer edge. And how deep are they? Is it screws you do it uh, in they with? Go into, we uh, drill into the concrete six inches and put a concrete anchor bolt. Oh wow. Which then secures the tie down uh, mechanism of the strap. And who started this system of? Uh, this was designed over the years. Uh, my engineer is the one who designed the foundation. The tie-down straps come from Minuteman Anchors, and Minuteman Anchors gives you direction on how to install the straps. Uh, so we basically are following the instructions of the engineer in designing and uh, building of the slab, and then we're following the uh, installation instructions for the tie-down strap. Now, as I understand it, not everybody builds houses like this. Some people just use a concrete slab where the ground is, um, the, the soil is allowed to drain quickly 
In this particular case, we don't have well-drained soil here, so we have to use a concrete footing, uh, which is 36 inches. So this is a frost-proof foundation. Let's go over and take a look at what they're doing. Can you tell us as we're watching it? So basically, they're pulling the two halves together. And as you can see, there's the two pieces are sliding together. And how do they do that? What do they use under there? They're using a jack to slide it over. Wow. And then once they're all done, this outside here gets sided. You can see that there's three quarter inch um, OSB siding, OSB wood on the outside. What does OSB stand for? OSB is, uh, I don't know what it is. <laughs> But it's basically like a plywood. It's a sheathing that goes all the way around the whole house uh, to strengthen it. And then they use a weather resistant barrier to insulate it. All right, let's keep walking around the property and you keep telling me what we're watching. Here in the back of the house, we're putting a patio. Oh, wow. There'll be a set of steps, a patio, and then there will also be a shed. So this really has a pretty unique um, backyard. We were able to utilize this. Normally, there would be two small single wides in here, but we decided this would be better to put two, uh, combine the two lots together and make one lot for a two-bedroom house and two baths. Wow. Is this the biggest house you'll ever be able to build here? Um, we never know <laughs> until we get to the site and try and determine what's going to fit. Most of what we put in here are single wides. They're 14 or 16 feet wide by all the way up to about 56 feet long. So every lot has a whole different set of variables and you never know what's going to be able to go there? That's right. Until we get to the site and do the layout and decide the best way to utilize the space. Our project manager, uh, Xander, is the one who designs the layout for the house as well as the layout on the lot. So since we're near this propane tank, can you talk a little bit about um, propane? So the way that all these houses are fueled is by propane gas, which is LP gas, liquid petroleum gas. And this propane will heat, will be used for the furnace and the cooking. Um, very safe. The tanks are all rated to be used in a mobile home park. The way that this works is when the customer purchases the home there's a full tank of propane and then they receive an automatic delivery every month. So it might be 30 or 40 hour delivery every month. On average I would say this is a hundred gallon propane tank. On average throughout the whole year you may be using two or maybe three tanks of fuel depending on how much uh, your home and what you set your heat at. These are very energy efficient houses so we don't really estimate the heating cost to be very much. Very nice. Should we continue walking around the house? Not that way. Okay. It's all mud. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Hi there, how are you? <laughs> okay, I'll just keep looking at the house. How are you feeling? So the other thing that we're doing is <clears throat> on the front, there'll be a 4x8 uh, step with a concrete pad, which will come down onto the sidewalk. And this area here is going to be all open where the shed will be sort of set back where those um, meters are electric meters are to okay. hide the meters so it's going to be a great lot a great you know we're doing everything first class the sidewalk the patio um, so it's a beautiful house so can you speak a little bit about mobile homes versus manufactured homes? Well, the difference between a mobile home and a manufactured home is the mobile homes were built prior to 1976 when there was not as 
a strict construction code. Uh, the manufactured homes are built to a very strict code standard, which was administered through HUD, through their manufactured housing division, and basically the engineers who design the house have to meet all the codes that are set up in the HUD code. So this home is um, built on a steel chassis which supports the floor system and then there is a uh, three-quarter inch floor. Um, as I mentioned earlier the whole house is um, wrapped in the OSB siding, OSB sheathing which strengthens the house up because this particular house has drywall in it. Uh, they use a 20-year roof. The siding is um, no different than any other house that's built. And once we set it in place and put the skirting around it, you don't even know it's a manufactured home. Once you go inside of it, you, it's amazing the inside of the house is no different than what a lot of people call modulars. So this is not a modular, it's a manufactured home because the chassis stays with the house, the steel frame. A modular is lifted off of the steel frame and set on a permanent crawl space or basement foundation. So I brought it up because you see these two hitches here and that's how it's brought here and then for all intents and purposes these houses are never mobile again. So the hitches come off, they're stored underneath. The axles are kept with the house so if for some reason the house needs to be uh, move to another location. It can be um, put back on its tires and axles and hitch, disassembled and moved. I've never seen that happen, but I guess it could. So it could be retransported to another location at some point. All right, so uh, we're going to sign off now. We thank you for visiting us today with Mr. Dolan who's been in the manufactured housing industry for over 35 years. It's an honor and a privilege to um, hear you speak and explain to all of our viewers um, how we're doing it different than what they expect. There's a cultural, I guess, bias maybe that they expect things to be um, not up to quality standards and you've really shown us and we'll show other videos on the inside to give people a view of what this is not your grandma's trailer anymore. Thanks for stopping in. This is Maria Dolan, Marketing Director at MyHomeInCarteret.com. You can email us at info at DolanHomes.com to get started on the informational email and all the process of how to purchase one of these gorgeous new homes. Thank you very much, and Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas!